Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Koboman. In today's video, I'm going to talk about ODBC driver connection setup and configuration. So what is ODBC driver and why would we want to set this up? Um, for example, some programs uh, require connection to remote databases and they are typically set up through ODBC driver connection setup. So for example, you have an application that uses ODBC, which by the way stands for Open Database Connectivity. And it requires ODBC driver in order to connect to a database that is located somewhere remotely. It could be anywhere, right? There's a remote server somewhere, um, you know, far away. And we are going to use those desk driver to set up a connection and authentication for that program. This can also be implemented different types of programs that use ODBC drivers. But in the nutshell, they let you, they basically let you connect to a database that is located somewhere remotely that usually houses account data, any type of huge and massive data that a database would house, right? So let's go ahead and, and learn how to set up this ODBC driver. And our, we're going to go and visit our control panel first, right? Just to kind of let you um, understand how and how I get to things. And this is usually set up as large icons, I'm sorry, as a category, but I like to set this up as small icons so that way we can find exactly what we are looking for. In order to get to our ODBC driver, which by the way will have to be installed separately, and I'll show you exactly why and where, because all programs will, um, you know, have different, uh, you know, different uh, specific drivers for that connection. So in order to get, you know, to our ODBC driver setup, we're going to look in here and look for a very first option that comes up here, which is administrative, administrative tools, right? We're going to select that. We're going to open this up. And within here, we need to look for ODBC connection. And here we are, we have 32 bit and a 64 bit. Um, I usually select 64-bit. So far, I haven't found any issues with that. Um, of course, double check with the uh, database uh, connection uh, the requirements that you may have. So let's look at the driver first. And this is what I'm talking about. If you select here on the driver, so which is fourth tab over, kind of in the middle here, if you select drivers, you can see which type of drivers we already have installed. This is, I believe, by default installed through Windows. So this is SQL Server type of ODBC uh, driver, right? So let's say you have uh, a program, let's say called Toad, which is just an example of a program that allows you to connect to a remote database. You may have a separate type of driver requirement that you would have to install and it would show up in here, right? That, would, that way you would know that you have that specific driver for that database installed, right? So now we know what, you know, what kind of drivers or what to look for when it comes to drivers and where to find them, you know, because, for example, let's say you do have specific instructions on connected to a certain database and it says you have to have this type of driver installed. You go in here, fourth tab over, see if it's installed. If not, then you have to make sure it's installed first, right? In our case, we're going to use this one just to kind of, uh, you know, get an example of how to go about this, right? So... The first uh, couple of tabs we're going to concentrate are uh, user DSN and system DSN, right? These are the most typical ones you would be um, concentrating on when it comes to setting this up. The difference between user as DSN and system DSN connection setup is that user one is only allowing the specific user to connect to this database. So let's say I'm logged into this computer and only me Kobo man can use this connection, right? So this is what means user. If you go to system DSN and set it up in here, right? You would basically allow everyone that, you know, logs into this computer, that uses this computer to connect to, to, connect to the same database, right? So if you want to share this and you don't want to set it up for, you know, if it's a shared computer and you don't want it set up for each user, you go to system DSN, and then you set it up for everybody, right? So in our case, let's just kind of pretend we're doing this for only this user and we're going to create it, right? 
it's going to be same setup. It, you know, the only, like I said, the only difference is letting everybody use it on their system or just the most single user. But when it comes to setup, it's going to be the same. So now we know, so now that we are in the, you know, appropriate tab that we want, we're going to select add, right? And the first thing we're going to notice again is our driver, right? So this is the driver we're going to use. And again, if you need to use a different driver that you will have to install separately, um, you would select that. So you would kind of look for it here, right? And in my case, I'm just going to stick with this one, but you would have multiple ones here. And then I'm just going to select that and click finish. And here, there are a couple of different things you can um, use. And this may be very specific to the database that you're connecting as well. So be kind of careful. But here, just for the test reasons, it says here, what do you want to um, use it as a name to refer to this data source? And I'm just going to use it. You know, I'm just going to call it data, data, database connection, right? Just for an example. And uh, if you want to describe it, I'm just going to call it first database, right? Database, right? So that's just an example of what I'm going to call it. Here's the important part of it, right? Um, this in this part we need to know the name of the server that we want to connect to right so this could be an IP address it could be you know combinations of you know combinations of letters and, and numbers depending on what the name of the server is or whether you want to use an IP address right in our case I'm just going to use something simple 192.168.0.1 right this is just an example of you know what might be the location of our server, right? So this is something you have to figure out on your own. Once you figure that out, you put it in, you plug it in, you select next. And by the way, you know, before, uh, you know, when we try to connect this, it's going to fail because obviously we're just kind of pretending that we're connecting, but we're kind of going through this, um, you know, so we can uh, learn how to do this. So when it comes to this authentication, right here says, how should a SQL server verify that authenticity the authenticity of the login ID. So it's basically trying to figure out who are you? Why are you trying to connect? Do you have credentials? Are they tied to your Windows login or not, right? So by default, it's selected It's selected here. It says with Windows NT authentication using the network login ID. Your domain Windows login um, is the same. It allows auth authentication or uh, access to the remote database. You would leave this as it is, right? And then after that, you would just click next and it would basically use your Windows login that you've used to, you know, log into this computer as the authentication. It would say, oh, okay, this is the same thing as your Windows login, window, you know, login ID, Windows password. Okay, fine, you have access to this, right? This has to be set up on the database remotely, right? So we need to figure this out, you know, ahead of time. But a lot of times these remote databases have their own login and login ID and password, in which case we would select the second tab where it says with SQL server authentication using, um, you know, using login ID and password entered by the user, which means the user would have this information, right? So if we select that, you can see that this becomes available and we can type in, you know, our, you know, login ID and password. And then we can simply just type in, it says automatically filled part of it here because it knows that my login ID for this computer is Koboman, and then we would just type in the password, whatever the password is, you know. And then once we're done with this, which, you know, we decide what kind of authentication we want to use, then we can simply select next. And in this, in our case, it's going to fail because it's not a real a server that I'm trying to connect to. But once you fill this out properly, then you would be able to connect to, and once you're finished, you would see within here, See, it's, it's not responding here because, but you would see in here that you have a setup, uh, completed your setup for the remote database connection, right? So guys, that's simple, as simple as, as, as it gets when it comes to this ODBC. I know a lot of times people, you know, look at this, oh, what is this ODBC? I've never done this, but this is one of those things you should learn because, um, quite often, uh, uh, certain users will need to connect to specific databases, whether you know, they're doing some kind of a data entry or some kind of, uh, you know, remote server editing or whatever it is that they're doing, right? All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And again, this is, of course, I, like I said, it failed because it's not a real server that I'm trying to connect to. 
And uh, if you like this video, please share it with friends, like it, dislike it, leave a comment. Let me know if you have any other questions. I'll be glad to help you. Just to kind of throw this out there as well, I have a Patreon page if you'd like to support me. Uh, that will be located at patreon.com forward slash Kobuman. Thank you so much, guys. I wish you best of luck. Bye-bye.